What is going on everybody? Welcome back, MTG here with another episode if you're new to the channel. Hi there. This is iPhone 14 Pro Max. I think you should buy it and here's why. Starting off with display on the iPhone 14 Pro Max and some may agree with me, some may not, but that is completely okay. I think display is one of the main reasons why you should pick up the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Uh, it's much better than previous models. Uh, it's 1000 nits of max brightness, which is typical 1600 nits of peak brightness HDR and 2000 nits of peak brightness outdoors. And if you're someone who's heavily using their phone outdoors, this gets super bright. The brightest on any smartphone that I have used as well. Uh, the Galaxy S22 Ultra, I think, believe uh, peaks at 1750 nits and brightness outdoors. So this definitely beats that. And I think display is the most important part of the device because it's the part of the phone we interact with the most. So when we're watching YouTube videos like this one, when we're playing games like Call of Duty or when we're watching Instagram reels or whatever, viewing content, reading emails, replying to text messages, sending out tweets or whatever it is, we're doing it on the display, right? We're not just, we can't kind of, do those things without the display. So having a great crispy resolution, high resolution, 120 Hertz display is makes the experience so much better. And the iPhone 14 Pro Max, cause it has larger display, the largest on any iPhone 6.7, uh, larger than its little brothers, the 14 Pro and the iPhone 14, same as the iPhone 14 plus screen size at least. Uh, it just gives that much more immersive experience. Just look how crisp it is. And if I bring it up to full brightness, there you go. It, it looks really good. Um, I would definitely recommend checking this out in person at your local carrier stores or at your local Best Buy to really pick it up in the hand or your local Apple store. Pick it up in the hand, feel it, uh, see how bright it gets. You're going to really enjoy it. Uh, the one thing that some may not agree with is going to be the dynamic island right here. And if I kind of just bring up the display just a little bit, um, let's go to the lock screen right here. You can see it. And I I did turn off always on display, like the wallpaper at least with a new update on iOS 16, you can turn off the wallpaper. So this is always on display. And I've noticed it doesn't kill as much battery as it would before. Nonetheless, this dynamic island, I've, I've gotten used to it. Um, it hasn't really bugged me too much. For some, it gets in the way of viewing content and whatnot. For me, it doesn't really matter, uh, but definitely does stand out more than a notch. So for some who don't like the dynamic island, just stick with your typical iPhone 14 and the notch. But if you think dynamic island is great for you with like extra features that dynamic island implements, then this is going to be the display, the, the phone for you. Okay, I think reason number two is actually going to be the cameras on the 14 Pro Max. They're getting some upgrades from the 13 Pro Max. Now, I'll answer the question here. If I have a 13 Pro Max, should I upgrade to the 14 Pro Max? Well, no, these additions or uh, reason why I should buy it, I don't believe are applicable for those users who have the 13 uh, Pro Max. But if you have something a little bit older, like the 11 Pro Max or the iPhone 10, iPhone 8, whatever it may be, this is a great upgrade. I don't think you should be waiting for iPhone 15 unless you want to, that's up to you. But cameras, huge upgrade. From iPhone 6S all the way up until iPhone 13, we've always had a 12 megapixel camera, but this year we're finally getting a 40 megapixel camera, a main lens camera. Obviously we have the telephoto and the ultra wide and they just work so seamlessly. Like you don't notice when you're switching from ultra wide and I'll be leaving a couple sample photos when you're switching from ultra wide to telephoto to its normal lens, it's great. Now with 40 megapixels, obviously sharper images. And for those who edit raw photos, you can definitely take advantage with the 40 megapixel photos. But for those who don't like myself, at least right now, I don't take raw photos. Um, I've seen that normal photos like in daylight and with night photos, they've still done a great job. And I can definitely rely on the cameras on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. However, the thing that I rely on more with the iPhone 14 Pro Max is this right here, like this video you're watching. It's 
video recording. For me, iPhones have been a huge part of the channel. And in fact, I'm actually recording with an iPhone right now. But this is my main recording device, iPhone 14 Pro Max. Why don't I get a camera? I do have one, but it just works so seamlessly. It's much easier to use. It works better with my workflow and I can always rely on the iPhone 14 uh, Pro Max's camera, whether that be for B-roll, whether that be for A-roll for many of my videos, I don't need to worry about bringing with, with me a $2,000 plus dollar camera just to take photos. If I have my 14 Pro Max or videos in that case, if I have my 14 Pro Max, I'm all set to go with taking both photos and for videos. And for those who are looking to start making content, making YouTube shorts, because in 2023, in February, 2023, YouTube is going to monetize YouTube shorts. So if you want to get into that game, this is the device. And if you have this, well, get started because it's a great phone and it's a great camera phone as well. Uh, I think the best phone or the best camera is the phone that you carry in your pocket. And if it's this, well, look no further. You should start making content right now, whether you wanna make TikToks or Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, or just long form YouTube videos. You wanna start making content. You have probably one of the greatest phones to do so. I started my channel with a smartphone and I continue to make videos with a smartphone and I'm almost at 25,000 subscribers at the time of this recording. Thank you all so much for subscribing, by the way. And if you haven't, be sure to hit that subscribe button and support the channel. It really does mean a lot. Anyway, let's move on to battery life. So now you're gonna be like, okay, battery life on 14 Pro Max, I've heard it wasn't great. Well, I can tell you this, it changes from user to user for me. Uh, when I turned off the always on display, at least like with his first update, it showed the wallpaper. Um, it wasn't the greatest. I turned that off and after a couple weeks, I, you know, the phone started to recognize how often and what I do on my phone on a daily basis. So I was able to kind of optimize battery accordingly. And it's been great. I don't need to charge it every day. And that's a huge plus. I mean, I typically start my day around seven. I end at 9 p.m. Uh, but this is my secondary phone as in, uh, when I'm getting phone calls for the day, like through personal, um, then I'm using a different device. But for the business use for the YouTube channel, this is my device. Uh, I am using it to upload YouTube shorts and to make TikTok videos. Um, and it gets me throughout the day. Like I'll start the day with 100% and I'll end with well over 50%. I'm watching a lot of YouTube videos on, so I'm making use of that display and I'm easily getting seven hours of screen on time. As for charging, I'll tell you this, charging has been uh, normal. Like charging speeds has been normal, uh, but I don't use the lightning port. I've never used a lightning port once on my previous 13 Pro Max, and I have recently had to use the lightning port to charge my iPhone because I didn't bring my MagSafe portable chargers with me and I didn't have a MagSafe charger around me, uh, so I was forced to use a lightning cable. But for me, I strictly use MagSafe to charge my iPhone. And if iPhone 15 gets rid of the charging port, the lightning port right here, I think I'm all set to go. Um, but if you're looking for a phone with great battery life, uh, that also adds into like great performance software wise, iPhone 14 Pro Max is definitely the way to go. You're getting the best of the best. Uh, if you want the absolute best uh, battery, in an iPhone, obviously it wouldn't be 14 Pro Max, it'd be 14 Plus because it's not using as much power. But for this, you're getting the best of both worlds. Great battery life that includes the best camera hardware uh, and the best display and great software um, in a great package device. And that is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Again, I'm gonna say it again. Uh, it varies from user to user, but in my experience, I've been able to rely on the iPhone 14 Pro Max battery life with charging and all that stuff. Uh, so if you're looking for the iPhone 14 Pro Max and wondering if its battery is going to last you with heavy usage especially, then thumbs up for me. Anyway, that's been it from me. I hope you guys 
did enjoy. Uh, if you have the iPhone 14 Pro Max, let me know in the comments down below and your thoughts and opinions about it. If you have any questions about the 14 Pro Max, I'd also like to hear your questions and I'll try to get back to you. But if you did enjoy, be sure to zoom in that like button, comment down below and best of all, share this video because it really does help out the channel a lot. I will help push my content out to more people. That's been it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.